Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome to Asian Filmist. My name is Ray and I love movies. And you know, me and Jason were just talking recently, you know, autumn just started. And we got to thinking, one of our favorite pastimes of the autumn season is sports and movies with sports as a central theme. And we wanted to talk about 10 movies out of Asia, well, more specifically Japan and Korea, the typical countries we usually talk about. And so Jason's gonna tell you his five sports movie picks, and then afterwards I'll tell you my five sports movie picks. And so that being said, let's talk about 10 sports movies out of Asia that'll get you pumped up. So my first film is Pacemaker, and Pacemaker is one of the saddest sports movies I've ever seen. It's basically about a promising marathon runner, but because of a serious injury, he has to drop out and abandon his dreams. But one day he's thinking, well, you know what? While I can't be a full-time professional marathon runner, I can become a pacemaker, the title of the movie. And the pacemaker basically means you run like the first section of a race and then you drop out. So this movie follows his journey while he works at restaurants and while he builds himself up to become a pacemaker. Like I said again, really touching story and you should check out this movie. The next movie is a skiing movie called Take Off. So in 1997, the Korean government applies to host the 2002 Winter Olympics. Only one problem, the host country, Korea, has no ski team. So this movie goes through the journey of hastily creating a ski team so that Korea can actually compete in its own event in the Olympics. The cool thing about this movie is actually based on the true story. And if you do like Take Off, which I'm hoping you do, you'll see the 2016 sequel, Run Off. The next movie is Mr. Go. And Mr. Go actually starts off in China and follows a 15 year old girl named Weiwei. When the Xi'an earthquake hit her family and killed her grandfather, she was forced to sell her gorilla to play baseball in the Korean baseball organization. Yeah, I know, a baseball playing gorilla? Bear with me. So the gorilla named Ling Ling is soon named Mr. Go, and he starts dominating the Korean baseball organization. He actually plays for the Doosan Bears, and other teams are enamored by this gorilla's skill at baseball. It's a really humorous and funny sports movie, and throughout the movie, you'll find yourself laughing and maybe even liking baseball, even if you don't like the sport. This movie was originally based on the comic Seventh Baseball Club, which was a Korean manhwa from 1985 to 1987. The next movie is Fourth Place, and this movie is about a former Olympic coach turned teacher. So when his his mother comes up to this former Olympian and asks him to teach her young son how to stop getting fourth place and get gold. He starts employing these crazy, overly strict, sometimes even abusive methods to train him just to get first place. And it actually traced back to his own training roots when his teacher, back when he was training to be an Olympian swimmer, actually employed the same abusive tactics that he was using on this mother's son. And the story really comes down to how do you teach a young Olympian to both compete while also having fun? And this movie made me really sad and it's kind of tragic in many ways because you see the plight of the son and how he's always, always over pushed to get first place. But at the same time, you understand the demons that the teacher is going through. And the last one of my picks has to be the table tennis movie, As One. In 1991, the two Koreas, North and South, merged their table tennis teams together to compete in the 1991 championships in Chiba, Japan. And at first, their main foes are each other because North and South Korea had a lot of tension as well as they have tension today. But the other adversary in the tournament is China. In China, if you guys don't keep up with table tennis, dominates table tennis every year. So the two Korea's table tennis teams have to work together, not just to mend their own differences and work together as a team, but to also find a way, but also find a way to end China's streak of winning world championships every year. And this is based on a true story too. And a lot of people from the actual 1991 World Table Tennis Championships actually helped to film and produce this movie. Now, those are my five picks. Over to you, Ray. Thank you for those recommendations, Jason. And if you guys haven't seen those movies, make sure to check them out, really fun. Now, here are the movies that I'm gonna talk about next. The first movie I wanna recommend is a 2002 Japanese movie by the name of Ping Pong. Ping Pong is the story of two high school students who are best friends, and obviously they're both part of the Ping Pong Club. They both become very good at the sport, and they both have differing personalities. On one side, you have the wild idiot who, who's very active and runs around, and you have the guy who's kind of the, the silent and calm type. But nonetheless, they're best friends because of their love for Ping Pong. This is a great movie in a sense, it's not only a really fun underdog story, but it's a really good coming of age story as well. In this story, as I said, the characters are really good at the sport, but one of the characters ends up losing really badly to a rival, so he has to kind of learn and take that loss and basically level up from that. Not only is the story really well, not only is the story well put together, but 
the actual ping pong matches themselves are quite fun and exciting to watch. Definitely check this out if you have the chance. The next movie on my list is a 2010 Japanese movie by the name of Box. And it's about these two best friends in a boxing club. Now, before you guys laugh, yeah, the story is quite similar to the aforementioned ping pong, but you change up the sports from you change up the sport from ping pong to boxing. Essentially, the formula is the same. You have two best friends. One is the wild and likable idiot, and the other is the calm and not so cool, but shy and he kind of becomes inspired by his best friend to join the boxing club at his high school and take up the sport this is another cool coming of age story as the wild and crazy one he's kind of like the, he's the best boxer in his club but then he suffers this horrible loss and he kind of goes into the slump and his best friend and their teammates have to work together to pull him out of his slump what i like about the story it, it is that it doesn't really focus on one of the two friends to be the central main character it divides its time evenly be between the two for a very nice and fun narrative. Also the scenes depicting the actual sport are legit. Uh, it, it doesn't hurt that the main bad guy or the character they kind of dress up to the, the bad guy in the story is an actual professional boxer and some of the characters were trained by professional boxers in preparation for this role. So Box, you know, it might have a typical story but it has a lot of heart and it definitely deserves a watch. The next story in my list is a 2008 Japanese movie Gachi Boy and it's kind of a mix of you know you have your sports elements of it and it's also a pretty good tearjerker. It's about this university student in his school's pro wrestling club. Now he himself, he's not actually a really good athlete. He's actually kind of weak, but he has a lot of heart. So this movie has a really good underdog story. But to top off all the drama, uh, he actually has a form of amnesia that uh, after a good night's sleep, he forgets what happened the day before. But in order to help him kind of remember or recall things as he goes along he takes photos of all the different events and the people that he interacts with day to day this movie has a lot of heart and it gets you really excited and if you're not careful enough it probably will make you cry for the next movie on my list i'm going to try to change things up a little bit usually i talk about all japanese movies but this time i kind of want to talk about a korean movie this time and the next movie on my list is a 2016 movie by the name of split the central sport in this movie is bowling and it's about this is washed up bowler at one point in his life he was probably the top bowler in Korea but after a horrific car accident he kind of becomes a cripple so he he bowls on the side to make some extra cash uh, for his friend in order to get her out of debt of course he's not in the same shape as how he used to be but one miraculous day he stumbles upon this kid who's who shows signs of autism and everyone around him just kind of laughs and giggles at his weird mannerisms and gestures but the pro bowler kind of sees something special in this kid and no matter how weird or strange this kid's mannerisms are he always manages to score a strike so he recruits this autistic kid in order to help him uh, get his friend out of debt by basically playing bowling with money on the line the scenes depicting bowling are really cool and really exciting and as you what you would expect from a Korean movie there are a lot of added almost unnecessary drama added to the story in order to get you emotionally attached to the characters. Thankfully, there isn't anyone with cancer in this story, but then you can expect a lot of tragic backstories and a lot of near-death experiences. But it's still a treat to watch this movie. The last movie I want to talk about is a personal favorite of mine. It's a 2009 Japanese film by the name of Opai Volleyball. And in case you don't know, the word Opai means boobies. I like this movie just because it has a really childish brand of humor. I mean, uh, if you can smile about boobies, you'll have a really entertaining time with the story. The story is about a teacher who just recently started working at the school and gets put in charge of the school's volleyball, boys volleyball team. Now this volleyball team, they they suck compared to the girls volleyball team but they have a good time because you know their clubhouse is right next to the girls clubhouse so they can always peek and watch them change you know, they're all perverts so in order to get them motivated to play to win instead of just playing to look at girls she gives them an offer that not many boys would probably refuse at that age. She offers to show them her boobies if they manage to win the big tournament. So I don't know about you, if I was a junior high school student again, and my coach, if she was really cute, had offered me and my team to show off her boobs if we had won, 
Yeah, I'll get my work. I'll get my shit together. But don't worry, guys. As misleading as the title of this movie is, this movie does not go into any adult or pornographic territory. It's all kind of just innocent fun, believe me. And the scenes of volleyball, they're kind of what you can expect from a bunch of kids playing volleyball. It's not meant to be uh, like a pro uh, depiction of volleyball, but rather it's supposed to be more of an underdog story. And that's what this movie is. And that's where a lot of his heart comes from. And there you have it. We hope you guys enjoyed our list of 10 sports movies from Asia to get you hyped up. What did you guys think? What are your favorite sports movies out of Japan, Korea, China, any country in Asia? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And you can even catch me on Twitter at Raymaru555 if you want to chat up more about movies. And as always, everyone, thank you so much for watching. And if you like what you watched, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe so you can join in more discussions about Asian films. Take it easy, guys. See you next time. Emono wa tashikani itadaita ze.